You're watching Cartel TV and I'm Jenny. The latest 2019 CX-9, more equipment, seven seats, great looks, comfortable interior and still no diesel. But at least there is now a CX-8 as a slightly smaller diesel only alternative. Now we loved the new diesel CX-5 and CX-8 that we just reviewed. So it's going to be interesting to see how the new petrol only power plant in this CX-9 stacks up. Today I'm reviewing the new 2019 Mazda CX-9 in the second trim level Azami and in the two-wheel drive version. Okay, would have liked to have tested out the all-wheel drive, but with all the perks of this CX-9, I have a lot to run through anyway. Now, even though they all look quite similar, I have to say I quite dig the look of the new Mazdas. Sleek headlights, huge, instantly recognizable grille, stylish lines that shun the boxy shape of most of its competitors and still keep interior practicality. I think the front has both style and aggressiveness. Personally, I find that the lights are a little bit small in contrast to such a prominent grille, but generally it's a nice looking front. The side view is also sleek and I love the falling bonnet line and the elegant boot door window angle, even though it takes away from some space in the boot. Even the rear is a bit of a head turner. Look, I'm just at the stage where I give points if the rear isn't hideous on an SUV. Who knew it only took some elegant sheet metal and a thin line along the boot door? The only engine in the CX-9 is a 2.5 Sky Active turbo petrol. Now, if you hadn't heard, the Sky Active petrols are now turbocharged, but still incredibly refined. The 2.5 litre engine has electronic direct injection and produces 170 kilowatts and 420 newton meters of torque. Now, the torque comes from just 2,000 revs so it means it's a really nice drive. The engine's paired with a six-speed automatic and it complements the engine's performance. The engine is really responsive and it has far more power than you need in everyday conditions. There's next to no turbo lag due to a dynamic pressure turbo system which adapts to give the best effects for the rev range you're in at the moment. This along with low-end torque gives a great feeling of continuous power delivery. All-wheel drives have iActive system that predicts road conditions to adjust various systems for more efficiency and comfort. Now I don't have that as I have the two-wheel drive version here and even that is really comfortable so it's hard to imagine how much better the iActive would actually be. Efficient Tech Solutions continue with systems such as the IE Loop which uses energy generated from braking to power various systems in the car thus saving fuel. I also have to say a few words about the gearbox. It's called Sky Active Drive and it's a real pleasure. I usually like dual clutch gearboxes for their swift reaction times but I agree with Mazda that they can be a bit dodgy as well. If you've tried Volkswagen's DSG at low speeds, you'll know what I mean. So, they reinvented the traditional automatic by minimizing the use of torque converter as much as possible. And the result is better fuel efficiency, more power, longer lasting parts, and a smooth delivery. The shifts are fast, quiet, and never jerky. Honestly, it's probably one of the best automatic gearboxes I've experienced of late. More Skyactive named tech is hidden in the body and chassis where it lowers weight, increases rigidity and provides a smoother ride. So we tested the CX-9 in a bunch of conditions on good and bad roads, um, pack with people, driver only, in the city and out. And I have to say in all conditions, it really was an impeccable drive. The only thing that, you know, sort of grabbed me was it just felt sometimes like the heavy ass would end up in the front seat with me when I was braking. But it's a heavy car, so I guess that's to be expected. The size makes it less appealing in the city, but if that's not a problem for you, you're in for a treat with the CX-9. There's loads of room in the front and second rows, and the seats are pretty comfortable. But I have to say the headrest does not allow me to put my head back and it feels pushed forward. So losing a point for that. There's also plenty of storage space and charging points, 12 volt ones. You also get six cup holders and six bottle holders and the second row seats are actually heated and adjustable, which gives you a little bit more room for the third row. I have manual third row folding and it's really easy to lift the seats. I thought I might have to actually get in the boot to get more leverage, but I don't. Just a simple pull and the seats willfully rise to accommodate two more people. Okay, two more small people, pre-adolescent if possible. But to be honest, look, the Mazda third row are some of the more comfortable that I've sat in. You've got a bit more depth, so yay. Leg room is minimal, as it always is in these third rows. There are no air vents in the third row, although the front two rows climate controls should adequately cool the back. I guess you could just put your least favorite children in this row. That's up to you. What I do like is the amount of boot space left with all seven seats up. You actually get a nice wide space and that's despite the low rear window limiting it a little bit. 
It's not huge, but it is pretty good for the mid-size class with 230 litres with the seats up and 810 litres with the third row down. Of course, you can fold the second row as well and get van-like proportions. Now let's get up front. Even in the back, you can notice great materials and build quality, but it's in the front that you can really appreciate the design sleekness. The design is functional and somewhat minimalistic. The dashboard has this straight, elegant line we've seen in other masters, and all the panels, controls, and surfaces are brought really close to the driver. This means that things like the central console are massive, which improves both the feel and functionality. I love this compact gear lever and the position of the screen. It is all alone up there and feels more like looking at a TV than a screen in a car. If there'd be one little thing to complain about, it would be that the aircon controls are quite tucked away behind the gear lever here. When you're driving, this isn't a problem since a lever is pulled back, but when in park, it does obstruct the aircon controls a little bit. But that also means you're at a standstill, so it doesn't matter if you have to take your eyes off the road to fiddle around a little bit. The Azami gets plenty of interior perks such as these amazing leather seats, leather steering wheel, 7-inch multi-information display, 8-inch touchscreen with MZD Connect. And I don't know why I've waited this long to mention it, but it also now has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. There's also premium Bose sound system with 12 speakers, 360-degree camera and a lot more. I just have to say once again how upmarket everything looks on the inside. Now the CX-9 is not cheap, but in terms of interior Interior quality, functionality and design, I actually feel like it competes with some models in higher classes. It's also jam-packed with safety. You get 360-degree camera, adaptive LED headlights, blind spot monitoring, keyless entry and start, ABS, automatic locking, driver attention alert, dynamic stability control, EBD, emergency brake assist and stop signal, forward obstruction warning, hill start assist, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, front and rear parking sensors, rear cross traffic alert, reversing camera, roll stability control, smart brake support and city forward and reverse brake support, trailers Stability assist and much more. Whew. Prices for the CX-9 start at just over 46000 and in this near top trim two-wheel driver's army, it will cost you around 63000 drive away. Now is there room for both the CX-9 and the CX-8? Well, before doing the review, I wasn't sure. I knew what to expect from the CX-9, knowing their development direction, but the CX-8 was so damn good and it even had that lovely diesel. Yet after driving the CX-9, I have to say it's noticeably larger. There's more space and more weight to it, more feedback from the road, more tech, and the engine, although it's not the amazing diesel, is pretty darn good. Look, this gets a positive vote in my book, but if it were my choice, I would hands down go the CX-8. It's got everything that the CX-8 CX-9 has in a more compact and neater feeling package. And plus, it's a diesel. Thanks for watching Cartel TV. Now, you may have been wondering where we've been lately, and we did take some time off to explore the northern borders of Greenland. Got a little lost, but we are back. So you'll be seeing plenty more content from us soon. So stay tuned and don't forget to hit your notification button. See you next time. Peace.